people think, well, you know, you're telling me to kill my lawn and yet now you're talking about grasses. These are a different sort of grass. These are typically what we would call in the industry an ornamental grass. They're grasses as a specimen plant. Um, and oftentimes, ornamental grasses are used as a combination of green material with flowering plants, what they put in perennial borders or mixed borders. A number of people are now doing meadow gardens, uh, naturalistic gardens where they combine perennials, um, ornamental grasses, and things like bulbs. So that's become very popular, especially as people are looking for lower maintenance gardens, because it's a lot less maintenance than a maintained turf wall. Um, I love native grasses, and I grow a number of them in my garden, and I have my favorite. Um, but I'm open-minded, there's lots of great grasses out there, depending on your gardening style. There's two main kinds of grasses. There's warm season growers and there's cool season growers. And um, cool season grasses are typically grasses that, as you might guess, are things like fescues, like lawn grasses that stay green all year long and they really thrive on cooler, moister conditions. And we do have a couple of native fescues. Unlike Marathon, Marathon turf is a fescue, but it's not a native fescue. That's a creeping fescue that stays very low. There's some great ornamental fescues. This is my favorite native grass right here. And you think, wow, big deal. Um, I love this plant. This is actually a California fescue, Festuca californica. Um, it's got this kind of nice gray-blue foliage. This is an evergreen grass, so it stays green year-round. It doesn't go dormant, which is a nice attribute in the landscape. Um, it can grow in the sun or the shade. And I have quite a bit of shade in my garden, so I find this is a useful plant. And when it flowers, um, you don't really think of grass as having ornamental flowers, but they do. They have what we call a panicle. The flower stalk comes up above the plant about this high, and it's a nice airy um, brown flower. You know, grasses don't have colorful flowers. They have very subtle, feathery type flowers. This is a great plant for dry shade. Um, it's quite flexible. It'll have um, the ability to grow in fairly dry areas. If you have areas that are wetter, it will also tolerate the extra water. And it's what we call a bunch grass. If you notice, the plant is very, it's just a, a bunch of grass right in the middle. It doesn't have any of the runners that go off to the side. This won't spread. There are, there are uh, bunch grasses in California, and there are rhizomatous grasses. And the bunch grasses are nice because they stay quite contained. They're great for, you know, for pots. Um, if you have one of those real modernistic landscapes where you're planting things in a grid, you know, say in clumps, nice regulated clumps. But there's also some nice plants that are runners. And here's another fescue. Um, there's a very common um, European grass called sheep's fescue, or fes Festuca ovina glauca, that you may be familiar with, little tufts of blue-green foliage. Uh, we actually grow some of it here. But now we have a great native alternative. This is Festuca rubra, red fescue. It doesn't look red at all. Um, this particular one is called Patrick's Point. And this is a wonderful small evergreen grass. It doesn't get very tall. It certainly doesn't get anywhere near this high. And if you notice, this grass has a very different growth habit. See how it's sending out little, little runners to fill the can? Um, this will form bigger clumps, and it's not really a runner, it doesn't run like Bermuda grass, but rather than staying as a strict little bunch, it'll grow to form a ground cover eventually. Um, Patrick's Point, Festica Fest Patrick's Point. Patrick's Point is a state park just north of Eureka on the coast. A um, great place to go camping if you're ever up in the area. Um, so that would indicate that this plant can take extra water. This is um, something that you wouldn't put in the driest part of your yard. You need a little bit of extra water. I water mine about twice a month um, to look, keep, keep it looking really nice. Uh, very popular. And this is our last sort of bluish grass. This is called Lamus Canyon Prince. Um, this was a selection uh, made by the Santa Barbara Botanical Garden from one of the Channel Islands. I can't remember which island it came from. But it's a, um, again, a dwarf, believe me, this is dwarf compared to the wild species. Lamus, um, the wild species can get six to seven feet tall. And nobody wants a grass six or seven feet tall in their garden. This is a nice, um, moderate sized plant. It gets to be about knee high, perhaps a bit taller. It has beautiful bluish green foliage. 
And like the fescues, it can actually tolerate some shade. I have it growing under trees in my yard. It can also tolerate full sun. But it has a more dramatic impact because it's a broader blade. It makes a bigger clump and it's a taller plant. So if you want that blue-green foliage, um, again, this is an evergreen graft. This goes green year-round. And you want something that's more substantial than one of these. So you go, you know, it's like baby bear, mama bear, papa bear. <laughs> and this one does not bloom real heavily. Um, the California fescue blooms more often, but this is typically grown for the foliage impact rather than the flowers. But again, very good oh, and dry. You know, condition. you want to consider flower color, but grasses give you the important foliage color. And the other thing they give you, you can see right here, is texture. So the reason people grow grasses is for year-round color and year-round texture. And it's a more subtle effect than tons of flowers. And you do have tons of flowers in native gardens, but as we know, only at certain times of year, right? Peak flowering season are winter and spring. Summer is pretty much just green. And in fall, you do have flowers starting again, but it's not a big impact. So putting a few of these in really helps. So when they flower, things um, this is the biggest grass I'm going to talk about today. It doesn't look very big here. This is Deer grass. Um, deer grass is probably our most versatile native grass. And the reason it's that versatile is it appears everywhere in California. It can go from soaking wet right next to an overwatered lawn to totally naturalized out in the hills here and survive. Um, so a whole lot of water or no water at all. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you keep it totally dry in the summer, it will not go dormant, but it will not look its best. Um, again, I would recommend um, for landscape quality plants to water them about once a month or once every two weeks to keep it looking green. Um, it too is an evergreen grass. As I say, if you water it a little bit, it stays looking great. Um, this grass gets quite tall. The flowers, the flowers will get about this tall. Yeah. The leafy portion of the plant will get about maybe just below waist height. This is and a wonderful smaller grass. Um, it's in bloom right now. It doesn't usually bloom this late in the season, but because it's in a container, it is blooming. Um, this is one of my favorite grasses. It's called Aristida. Um, Aristida has these purple flowers, and the common name is purple freon. Uh, but if you run your hand over these flowers, it's not a, it's not a prickly, obnoxious flower. Um, we had it planted out in our, in our parking lot over by the cactus. And if you've been here in the spring when it's in bloom, it's spectacular. It's a very graceful, lightweight grass. This is a nice, this, I broke off the flowering heads. This is a lovely plant that this plant does not do it justice. You need to see it in the ground. Um, this is Calamagrostis foliosus. Um, Calamagrostis is also found in Europe. There's species native to Europe. Carl Forster is a very famous Calamagrostis. This is called Mendocino uh, reed grass, and because it's from the north coast, it makes a beautiful hemisphere, a small hemisphere, about this tall and about this wide, with this very tidy, black green foliage, with these pretty flowers that go out arching um, style. Most of the grasses have upright flowers. It's a very different look. These, the flowers go out to the side. It's a very tidy. Um, this is a Carex from, it's called San Diego Sedge, Carex spissa. And it's a big specimen plant. Um, it's got this pale bluish green foliage. Um, it's a sedge, so it likes a little bit of extra water. This thing, in a wet condition, like next to a pond or under a bird bath where it gets splash um, water, can get four to six feet tall. Very spectacular. In drier condition, um, it's probably two feet tall, two and a half feet tall. But it's used a lot in landscapes. This is um, Juncus. Um, and again, this is a plant that has these little brown flowers that like nothing flowers. Great for wildlife. A lot of the um, grass seeds are very popular with birds. So if you want to have birds attached to your garden, carex, sedge, and the grasses are good for a lot of the seed-eating birds. Doves, quail, um, goldfinches, things of that sort.